Over my past couple of videos I've been making the enclosure which you can see directly behind me and throughout I've been dropping loads of hints so that you could have a go at guessing which animal I would end up keeping in here. Now I do actually have the lizards now and in today's video I want to introduce them to you properly by doing a full species spotlight on this animal which is the western green lizard. So without further ado let me introduce you to these fantastic reptiles. The western green lizard goes by the scientific or binomial name Lacerta bilineata. The generic name Lacerta comes from the Latin for lizard and bilineata means two-lined, referring to the two stripes that juveniles of this species will have on either flank and some females will also carry into adulthood. A very closely related animal is Lacerta viridis, which in common parlance is usually referred to as the green lizard or sometimes maybe called the eastern green lizard. Now, whether the eastern and western green lizards actually represent two distinct species is still up for debate, so in today's video let's just assume that there are two populations of the green lizard, being the western and eastern ones, and that here we are referring to the western variety. These lizards belong to the family Lacertidae, which includes 300 to about 370 species depending on how you add them up. Now all of the lizards within the Lacertidae are very very typical for what you would expect of a lizard, having long tapering tails, limbs sprawled out to the side and conical heads. The closest relatives of the Lacertids are actually the Amphisbenians, which are those very peculiar soil shoveling chisel headed worm like lizard creature thingies. The next most closely related group includes the amoebas, the caiman lizards and also the tegus, which does go some way to validating the claim that jeweled lacertas or european eyed lizards are like mini tegus. Certainly the physical similarity is plain to see. An adult western green lizard is truly a sight to behold in the wild. With an average body mass of 35 grams, a snout vent length of 13 centimetres and a tail that can be twice as long again, these are one of Europe's largest lizards, albeit quite slender as far as lizards go, and in combination with their potentially very bright colour, they do look particularly exotic. The colour and pattern of the western green lizard is subject to severe ontogenetic change, meaning that as it goes from a hatchling to an adult, its colour and patternation can change widely. Hatchlings start life with a yellow green to blue green throat patch and a plain brown body. By the time they're a couple of months old, they'll have developed more green stretching back from the head, a couple of white lines and potentially some black speckling as well. Adult females may retain the pattern in, but the green will extend right from the head all the way to the tip of the tail. Alternatively though, some females may lose the patternation and just end up being a plain green all over. All male western green lizards will lose the lines and the black speckling will break up into small little dots to give them a sort of pixelated appearance. The green will become more and more vibrant and around the underbelly will be joined by some very bright yellows, making males incredibly striking to see in person. Both males and females can develop a turquoise to blue coloured chin patch, although it's only mature males in the breeding season which will develop the most extensive and deepest blue throat patches. Males of the eastern green lizard do actually develop a deeper blue chin colour and it does actually extend much further around the head, even extending over the eyes, and this makes it one of the few distinguishing features that you can use to tell the two varieties apart. The western green lizard is a highly active, diurnal, sun-worshipping species of reptile that hails from scrubby, grassy environments, favourably with some leaf litter and sparse tree coverage. They are found in Sicily in the southern part of the range, going north right the way through Italy and into Croatia, but blocked from going further north here by the Alps. To the west they go into northern Spain, and then all the way north throughout much of France, and even then into the Channel Islands. Populations can be found along the southern coast of England, although these aren't considered to be native and instead are thought to have resulted from escaped pets. 
These lizards are almost exclusively consumers of arthropods, and may actually show onto genetic change in this regard, as a study of a population in central Italy showed that juveniles consume mostly spiders, grasshoppers, crickets and true bugs, whereas adults preferred to consume isopods and beetles. Although I've seen no direct evidence of it, I wouldn't be particularly surprised to hear that these lizards might take small berries, nectar or pollen, because similar species have been known to do this. As they come from temperate zones, this is a species that will hibernate throughout the winter, and it's after this hibernation period that the males will develop their brilliantly coloured throat patches. Studies have proven that female green lizards will choose mates with the most UV reflective throat patches, and that males with reduced UV reflective patches will tend to lose in fights. This is a great example of how the fantastic colour vision of these lizards affects the way that they live. Having selected a partner and mated, a female will lay a clutch of 6 to 25 eggs in the spring, which will hatch later in the year to reset the cycle of life. The lifespan of these lizards is quoted as being 15 years, but how many of the wild ones actually make that I don't know, and also how much longer they might be able to live in captivity is also unknown. Hopefully mine will make it that long. And with that, we conclude our introduction to the western green lizard. So I really do hope that you've enjoyed this introduction to me new reptiles. I was initially planning on doing this a lot less formal than I have done, but seeing as most people have never heard of a western green lizard in the reptile hobby, I thought that I would do a proper full video on them so that you could get a true flavour for what they actually are. But yeah, with this, we finally mark the end of the enormous spree of videos that I've been doing recently, all about setting up this enclosure and about the western green lizards. So if you want to go back and re-watch anything or you haven't seen it yet, then I will throw up in the end screen a little thing so that you can go and watch all those videos. But with that, this is the end of the video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys!